good morning to all in today's session we are going to start with the 10th standard chemistry and physics unit number 8 chemical bonding series 14 is going to be discussed earlier we completed how the bond formation is possible with respect to ionic and the covalent bond taken into the consideration lewis dot structure theory electronic theory of valency have been discussed in earlier classes and even valency bond theory that is the advanced theory when when compared to the vesper theory and also electronic theory of valency and uh, uh, how the hybridization of orbitals are possible what could be the sp3 hybridization what is sp2 what is sp hybridization and the corresponding bond angles have been discussed in detail Uh, we also discussed about how the deviation in the bond angle is possible when compared to the expected value all those parameters have been discussed and a detailed explanation available on the channel called the world of competitive chemistry in addition to this one earlier we completed unit 1 to 7 entire topics available on the channel called the world of competitive chemistry let us discuss series number 14 in this session right so here this is in continuation to the valence the bond theory only where properties of ionic kind of covalent compounds are going to be discussed right so here uh, when we compare when we consider the compounds so sodium chloride is purely ionic in nature hydrochloric acid when considered it is the polar covalent compound we will discuss in, in detail what is polar covalent what is normal covalent compound and uh, with respect to their uh, kind of bond then how their properties are varied that kind of correlation is going to be discussed in this session right so here serial number property sodium chloride hydrochloric acid ethene were taken as a credentials and we are going to measure their formula mass physical appearance type of bond formation melting point boiling point values and also solubility of the compound chemical activity so these are the parameters going to be compared with these three reference compounds sodium chloride purely considered as a ionic compound where transfer of electrons is possible from sodium to chlorine right that's the reason why sodium is acquiring positive and the chlorine is acquiring completely negatively charged one and both are held together by electrostatic uh, bonding hydrochloric acid when considered hydrogen one electron chlorine with the short of one electron and that p 2p x electron will participate in the mutual sharing and they will be forming a covalent bond but due to the difference in the electronegativity of both hydrogen and chlorine here slightly bond get displaced towards the chlorine atom even though mutual sharing is possible but chlorine is slightly more electronegative when compared to hydrogen hydrogen with the 2.1 chlorine with the 3 uh, electronegativity that's the reason why uh, here strong pulling of electrons are possible so that here chlorine acquiring partial negative hydrogen with a partial positive charge when we go to this any other compound called c2h6 called a purely organic compound and where all the bonds are non polar in nature all are mutually sharing the electrons without any uh, difficulty and there is a mutual sharing bond electrons remains in between the two atoms where the bond formation is possible and this is purely covalent in nature we can say non polar right so for these three kind of uh, compounds how the parameters get varied we will compare formula mass sodium chloride uh, is formed by sodium and chlorine atoms respectively and its mass will be 58.5 and hydrochloric acid it will be 36.5 ethene formed by two carbons and six hydrogens each car each carbon contributing 12 atomic mass and hydrogen with one atomic mass so that it will be 30 so these are the formula mass which are uh, purely calculated from their formula then physical appearance sodium chloride already we know this is the table salt what we are do, uh, what we are administrating on our daily basis and it will be a finely crystalline solid compound when we go to hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid in general it will be the colorless gas but when it is in somewhat dilute conditions it will be taken as a solution so in general laboratory applications hydrochloric acid used as a solvent and also reagent for so many kind of chemical transformations in general it will be a colorless gaseous compound so when we move on to ethane ethane uh, is also colorless gas 
So uh, hydrocarbons having the general trends like that, when the lower hydrocarbons are present, they are gaseous in nature. As the atomic number increases, they get liquefied and finally converted into the solid compound. So when we uh, take uh, carbon number one to carbon number four, up to carbon number five, we, we may say, uh, till that they are gaseous in nature. Five to more than uh, 16 like that, they are liquid in nature. So hydrocarbon purely, these gasoline, diesel, kerosene, all these are the category which are placed in the liquid compounds, so which are ranging from C, uh, C9 to C16. Till that, they will be in a liquid state. When we move on still higher uh, hydrocarbons like C30, there will be a solidification. Uh, we will get the coal tar. So that tar will be obtained. So in this manner, here C2 carbon, obviously it will be a gaseous in nature and the colorless compound it will be. And the type of bond, sodium chloride, just now we discussed, the, which is formed by the transfer of electrons because of high electronegativity difference, being a sodium is a metal, loses electrons because of electropositivity and the chlorine electronegative in nature and accept the electrons so that ionic bond formation is possible. Move on to hydrochloric acid here. The bond formed will be a covalent. Mutual sharing of electrons are possible, but slightly displaced towards the chlorine because of high electronegativity. And uh, when we consider the C2H6 purely, it is considered as a covalent because mutual sharing of electrons are possible and melting point. So when we compare ionic and covalent bond, ionic bond will be a more stronger because of oppositely charged are held together by electrostatic forces. That's why it will be extremely large. 801 uh, degree centigrade, it will be melted. And uh, hydrochloric acid uh, melting is possible at minus 115 degrees centigrade. Uh, all uh, hydrocarbons, all hydrocarbons uh, having low melting and boiling point of, uh, values in general because of covalent bond are somewhat uh, weaker when compared to the ionic bond formation. That's the reason why here it will be 183 degrees centigrade. Boiling point of the compound. So uh, melting point, uh, boiling point values also proportionate to melting point values only because melting point denotes what? Conversion of the uh, solid compound into the liquid with respect to the environmental conditions is called a melting point. Boiling point is nothing but boiling. When we are boiling, the liquid goes into a gaseous state that is nothing but boiling point temperature. 14, 13 degrees centigrade is uh, assigned for the sodium chloride and hydrochloric acid with a minus 84.9 degrees centigrade and ethane with a minus 88.63 will be the boiling point value. So when we compare all these, highest is assigned for the ionic compounds and the next will be for polar covalent bond. Because, because of polarity, again, there is a kind of electrostatic forces. So that's the reason why they are also acquiring higher. That means a moderate melting and boiling point values. And the least are assigned for these covalent compounds. Move on to solubility. As already we know, uh, when ionic compounds were taken, there are uh, distinguished ions are there. One is positive and either is negative. Positive, negative ions are able to soluble in a water type of solvent. That means a polar solvent is required. Polar solvent denotes what? The solvent which is polarized, which is containing a poles. So one is positive in either negative poles when present. Water is the simplest example for that kind with a H plus and OH minus ion formation. Ionic compounds, obviously soluble in water. Uh, if you take sodium chloride, it is soluble. If you take calcium chloride, it is soluble. If you take magnesium chloride, sodium hydroxide, all these are the kind of ionic compounds and all are soluble in water. Move on to uh, this, uh, what we are taking, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, uh, because of uh, partial poles generation, like partial positive and partial negative charge, they are the uh, clearly soluble in water. Hydrochloric acid mostly exists in the liquid state in the laboratory scale and even industrial scale that uh, is taken in the liquid form only because some extent of water already added to that one. And uh, um, when it is added with non-polar solvents like acetone, acetonitrile, benzene, some extent solubility will be assigned for that. So here, uh, 
So these are compounds, uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, being it is the polar covalent compound soluble in water and also in the organic solvents. Move on to this ethane. Ethane purely organic in nature. That's why organic solvents are suitable for this one. You may take benzene, acetone, ethyl acetate, ethanol, methanol, acetonitrile. All these are the suitable non-polar solvents in order to dissolve this ethane. Because ethane is non-polar, means uh, uh, no ions are present and even uh, benzene, these solvents also not having any kind of ions in that. So that non-polar solvents are suitable in order to dissolve these um, covalent compounds. Ionic compounds are purely soluble in water, whereas the covalent compounds are soluble in organic solvents. Now move on to chemical reactivity. When ionic compounds were taken highly reactive in the polar solvents, so uh, when you consider sodium chloride is added with water, for example, what happens immediately it gets solvated and converted into Na plus and Cl minus that is highly reactive within short span. Take a spoon of uh, uh, sodium chloride, add to water, what happens within the short span that is clearly, clearly dissolved in that. That extent the reactivity is assigned for ionic compounds which are highly instantaneous in nature instantaneous in the sense within the span of time no span of time that reaction will be carried those are called instantaneous in nature and uh, when we move on to hydrochloric acid being it is some extent um, polar bond here uh, moderate reactivity will be assigned not extremely large not extremely poor in between kind of activity will be assigned for this polar covalent compounds Obviously, uh, organic compounds being associated with covalent bond uh, in order to make a new bond, already existing bond should be cleaved. That's the reason why they require larger time and even heating conditions are required in order to do that. So sodium chloride when added to water need not to heat, just, just by addition it will be dissolved. But in order, to, in order to make the reaction with organic compounds, we need to heat otherwise mechanical steering is required otherwise hot plate is required such a kind of external conditions should be provided in order to facilitate these organic reactions because uh, already existing bond should be cleaved and a new bond formation is required that's the reason why these are slow and uh, room temperature uh, they will be obviously slow in nature so this is about the chemical reactivity of uh, ionic polar covalent and the covalent compounds. So this table used to compare the properties, how they will be varied based on the type of bonding existing in those molecules. Almost all ionic compounds are having similar kind of nature uh, with respect to these uh, formula mass in individual that depends upon their individual atoms present in that, that will not uh, with respect to chemical bond. But um, appearance, solid, uh, liquid, gas will depends upon this type of bonding. And um, melting boiling point purely depends upon the type of bonding existing in between the atoms which are combining. Uh, solubility is also purely based on the chemical bond type. So if it is ionic, polar solvent is required. If it is covalent, non-polar solvent is required. That is the criteria for this one. And chemical reactivity is also purely depending upon the nature of bond existing in between the atoms which are combining. So this is the kind of table used to compare the properties. Now we have... Uh, Typical example with respect to ionic and covalent bonds, sodium chloride is made up of uh, metal sodium, non-metal chlorine, halogen family. And uh, when these two get combined, purely metal and non-metal get combined, there is a formation of salt is possible and uh, chemical formula denoted as a sodium chloride. Sodium is nothing but natrium. That's why NA is assigned for this. And next is about magnesium chloride. Again, uh, we can say this is a kind of ionic compound where magnesium being it is a metal and uh, divalent in nature used to release two electrons. Chlorine have uh, short of one electron. That's the reason why here acceptance of one electron by each chlorine. So here uh, magnesium chloride, uh, two chlorines are required in order to combine with magnesium. And again, we can say it is a solid compound. So, and uh, potassium hydroxide, potassium being it is metal and oxygen non-metal, hydrogen also non-metal. There is a combination leads to give a salt type of, um, sorry, basic compound will be generated. It is obvious that all the ionic compounds are solid in nature. All the ionic compounds are solid in nature. This is the general trend we can observe in this diagram. Move on to 
polar compounds like hydrochloric acid possess properties like melting boiling point reactivity solubility between those of ionic and covalent bond so here hydrochloric acid being it is uh, moderate ionic moderate covalent in nature that means in between properties will be there so here we can clearly observe hydrogen is acquiring partial positive charge because of less electronegativity and chlorine displacement of electrons is slightly displaced electrons are displaced towards the chlorine that's why it is acquiring partial negative charge so because of these poles we can say some extent ionic bond nature will be there and uh, there is a there is no complete displacement of electrons if complete transfer is there we can say ionic but bond is existing in between hydrogen and chlorine that's the reason why we can say there is a existence of even covalent bond as well that's the reason why here it is a moderate in between ionic and covalent it will be the bridging uh, polar covalent compounds are the bridging in between ionic and covalent compounds is hydrochloric acid is polar or non polar what could be your answer hydrochloric acid is a polar compound but it is a covalent compound polarity is arised because of unequal sharing of valency electrons hydrogen uh, is acquiring partial positive and chlorine is acquiring partial negative that's the reason why slight displacement of electrons towards the chlorine is possible and hydrochloric acid in general used as a uh laboratory grade catalyst reagent solvent and so many uh, applications we are using this one and uh, if the covalent bond is between two atoms uh, two different element the shared electron pair shifted towards uh, the atom with high electronegativity so if two atoms are not having equal electronegativity hydrogen electronegativity is 2.1 chlorine will be with the uh, a uh, 3.5 then what happens obviously electrons are shifting electrons not completely shifting displacing towards the chlorine in the slighter extent here it is clearly mentioned with arrow so electrons are uh, slightly displacing towards the chlorine atom so that hydrogen acquiring partial positive and chlorine is acquiring partial negative charge here does within the molecule more electron negative atom bears the partial negative because uh, electron density is rising there less electron negative atoms we are the pos partial positive charge because electron density is somewhat lowering on this atom that's the reason why partial charges why partial charges if complete displacement is there you can assign h plus and cl minus it is not the complete displacement but partial that's why here partial charges assigned for these two ions polarity will be there now a molecule uh, uh, what is a polar versus non polar we are going to distinguish polar polar covalent bond and non polar covalent bond with a simplistic sample a molecule of this uh, with a neutral but possesses partial charges and the atoms within the molecule called a polar molecule so complete displacement is not there but some extent the displacement is there that's why we can say this is a polar molecule and the bond is said to be a polar covalent bond partial ionic and partial covalent nature will be assigned for this one some extent uh, ions will be there some extent uh, mutual sharing of electrons also present uh, here we are comparing polar covalent bond atom a let us assume it will be hydrogen atom b let us assume it will be a chlorine they are used to share the electrons in this manner after sharing of electrons after sharing of electrons if uh, electrons are more displaced more uh, inclined towards the second atom for example this uh, b atom then what happens this a atom is uh, experiencing some electron deficiency which is assigned with a partial positive and b atom uh, some extent uh, high electron density is there that is uh, denoted with a partial negative hence we can say a charged species originated hence polar polarity will be there then non polar we are taking two identical atoms two similar atoms for example one is hydrogen second is also hydrogen otherwise one is chlorine second is also chlorine what happens both are having equal strength if equal strength is there mutual sharing is possible that's the reason why here non polar it will become and e electrons are uh, contributed in between uh, equally and both are the common property for both the atoms in it will become a non polar bond in this manner polar versus non polar clearly explained by taking this example
Now, hydrochloric acid is the simplest example for the polar compound where we can assign the H do positive. Do positive denotes what? Uh, partial positive. Chlorine, do negative. Do negative means a partial negative because electrons, uh, hydrogen with S orbital and the chlorine with the P orbital are contributed in the bond formation and the lobes are uh, formed in this manner and electrons are uh, electrons are slightly displaced towards the chlorine that's the reason why it is acquiring partial negative charge so here is the hydrochloric acid which we are using in our laboratory now in the ionic compound exists a stronger electrostatic forces of attractions between the oppositely charged ions of the atom. Therefore, the solids and high melting and boiling points. Whatever the ionic compound you take, all the ionic compounds are solid in nature. There is no doubt. Sodium chloride you can take, magnesium chloride you can take, uh, uh, any kind of compound. Sodium nitrate you can take because acid-base combination always gives rise to uh, sodium nitrate. We can take any compound. All are uh, solids in nature. So sodium chloride is the simplest example where sodium is losing, uh, chlorine is gaining. That's the reason why uh, sodium acquiring positive and chlorine acquiring negative, always they are solid in nature. And uh, because of those forces of attraction, their melting and boiling point values also extremely large. Melting nothing but solid to liquid, boiling nothing but liquid to gas transformation. Now, why do ionic compounds have high melting points? So this is a general criteria which is assigned for all uh, ionic compounds. Let us assume this is a sodium chloride uh, crystal lattice. How extent uh, they are uh, they are in the close proximity? Very close proximity will be there and the three-dimensional arrangement will be there. In order to separate all these atoms, we have to supply the extra energy. E uh, extremely large amount of energy is required in order to cleave the bonding between all these. That's the reason why melting point of all the ionic components are extremely large. They are bonded in the three-dimensional structure in the completely uh, regular arrangement of atoms. Now, let us see how the solubility of ionic compounds are possible in the ionic solvent like a water. There is a uh, general proverb like, uh, like dissolved in like. Like dissolved in like is nothing but polar dissolved in polar, non-polar dissolved in non-polar. Means if the compound is polar, polar solvent is required. If the compound is non-polar, non-polar solvent is required. That's the reason why like dissolved in like, uh, that is the principle we have to obey. Sodium chloride when added to water, it is clearly dissolved. There is no doubt. Everybody know about this one. How the uh, solvation is possible, let us see. Uh, sodium plus ions are surrounded by the hydrated water ions and chlorine is also surrounded by the hydrated water ions. There is a greater intimacy between the water and chloride and the sodium and the water molecule. That's the reason why it is clearly soluble in water. So, uh, whatever ionic compound we are taking because of charged particles, chlorine is acquiring a negative and also water with a partial positive and negative charges, those are freely soluble in that. So, here, uh, polar solvent. Any polar compound we are taking, any kind of ionic compound we are taking that is uh, obviously soluble in water based on this uh, principle called like dissolved in like. Now, uh, the chemical reactions of the solutions ionic compounds, simply rearrangement of ions that takes place in the solutions reactions are instantaneous in nature. Instantaneous, nothing but rapid, very fast. So let us uh, take simplest example. I'm taking one of the ionic compound that is hydrochloric acid, any other ionic compound that is sodium hydroxide, NaA plus OH minus. Both are purely ionic only. We are mixing these two. What happens? Within the short span of time, they get converted into NaCl in water. Being it is ion, uh, partial uh, covalent compound and sodium hydroxide is completely ionic, the reaction will be instantaneous and a salt plus water formation is possible. So here, uh, this extent, uh, fastness will be there within the reaction because uh, always ionic compound displacement will be very uh, rapid in nature. Within the short span of time, the reaction will be proceeded without any heating, without any external supply of uh, energy. The reaction will be spontaneous. Now, the forces of attractions among the covalent molecules are very weak. Uh, bond existing between the covalent molecules are very weak. Therefore, covalent compound are gases and liquids in nature. 
So general example we are taking, chlorine in general is a yellow color gaseous compound and the bromine when considered it is a, a, a brown color liquid substance. Already we discussed in the periodic table, one and only one known metal existing in the liquid state will be a bromine only in the entire periodic table, right? So because of the covalent bond formation, these are existing either in uh, gaseous or liquid state, but uh, all the ionic compounds are solids only. Now, uh, they have uh, low melting and boiling points in general, covalent compounds being these are uh, uh, what we can say, weak bonds in between the atoms which are combining. That's the reason why less amount of heat is required uh, for their uh, transformation from uh, uh, solids to liquids are liquids to gases. That melting boiling point values are extremely low. I'm taking simplest example, gasoline, that means petrol. When we open the petrol, uh, uh, when we open the petrol lid, what happened? That will be evaporated in general. What's the reason for that? Because within the short, being it is a hydrocarbon made up of covalent bonds, what happens? They are in the liquid state in general. When we open, what happens? They will be evaporated without any heating. So there is a boiling. So we can say that is the transformation. Liquid to gaseous transformation is possible. So here, extremely low. We are not heating anything. Just we are uh, uh, making the contact with the air so that that liquid will be evaporated because of uh, less bonding interactions between the covalent compound, they are processing low melting and boiling point values. Uh, in chemical reactions of covalent compound, there exists a bond breaking and bond forming. Always the covalent compounds, covalent compounds when uh, participated in the chemical reactions, what we have to do already existing bond should be cleaved and a new bond formation should be possible. So here breaking of the bond and making of the bond is possible in the instantaneous manner. That's the reason why these reactions are very slow because first we have to cleave existing bonds and a new bond formation is possible. So here this requires some time. So that's why in order to cleave the bond, we have to supply the energy. That's why in order to make such kind of reactions, we have to heat these uh, reactants. So heating and uh, some special conditions should be provided in order to carry the covalent uh, reactions. So let us take a simplest example, hydrogen atom. Hydrogen molecules are taken and we have to cleave the hydrogen molecules in the individual hydrogen atoms. And oxygen molecule was taken that is also cleaved in this manner. Then only they get combined. One oxygen will combine with two hydrogens and another oxygen will combine with two hydrogens correspondingly. Two water molecules got generated. Initially, we are breaking already existing bond and making new bond formation in order to get the new molecule. In this manner, all the covalent reactions are slow in nature. It requires a time, some hours or some uh, time duration is required and external uh, energy supply is also required because uh, breaking and making of bonds are possible in this reaction. Now, like dissolving like means what type of chemical bonds are there in the solute particle, that solute can be soluble in the same kind of solvent. If uh, the compound is uh, charged particle like a positive and negative, then charged solvent is required and vice versa, right? So here I'm taking simplest example, water. Water is associated with the hydrogen with positive and oxygen with negative charge. H plus and O minus 2 will be there. When it is added with hydrochloric acid, obviously it will be soluble because here also we have charges, here also we have charges. Both are uh, clearly miscible. And uh, uh, when hydrofluoric acid was taken, H plus and fluorine minus will be there. Both the compounds are soluble in water because of polarity. Compounds are polar and solvent is polar. That's the reason why both are clearly soluble. So this is the formula for uh, solubility of ionic compounds in the ionic solvents. And uh, we are applying uh, for uh, non-polar compounds. I'm taking the simplest non-polar examples, benzene, toluene, and uh, paraxylene. Benzene means a six-member ring system. Toluene means a benzene containing methyl. Paraxylene means a two methyl groups will be there and the benzene ring. All are uh, completely non-polar in nature. And uh, these are the simplest examples for non-polar solvents. I'm taking benzene and adding hexane to that one. When hexane is added to benzene, being hexane is uh, non-polar, benzene is also non-polar, both are clearly miscible. Clearly 
insoluble no uh, two distinct layers will be absorbed when water added to benzene what happens benzene one layer water one layer you can clearly observe when oil added to water oil one layer water one layer will be possible but when hexane added to benzene so all are clearly miscible because it is a non polar compound hexane is also non polar compound so in this manner like dissolved in like is a simplest example non polar soluble in non polar polar soluble in polar this is the kind of solubility Uh, principle that can be applied to any kind of the compound you may take i am applying one more example taking benzene as a non polar solvent adding with a bromine already we know bromine uh, with a partial positive and partial negative being it is a polar in nature uh, uh, benzene uh, bromine when added to benzene there is no reaction solubility will not be there bromine forms one layer benzene forms another layer no solubility can be possible but same benzene added with ethane ethane being it is non polar compound it is clearly soluble in benzene solvent so in this manner based on the polarity of the compound the type of solvent we have to choose if the compound is non polar non polar solvent is required if the compound is polar polar solvent is required so in this way solubility of the given compound will be decided and uh, we successfully completed the entire unit of uh, chemical bonding hope this session will be helpful for your preparation detailed explanation with respect to ionic and covalent bonding uh, were discussed with respect to their corresponding properties too uh, i hope this session will help and uh, thank you very much for your patient listening thank you one and all